All right, so I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. Um, get started. So, like I said, my name is Kay Crandall um, with Chicago Citywide Literacy Coalition, Digital Literacy Navigator. We have our other navigator, Neo, on the call today, and um, Michael um, is in and out as well. Um, so, Joanne, let me know that you all are getting started with using North Star um, with students in the digital literacy classes. And um, everyone was interested in kind of getting uh, a more in depth view of the use of the curriculum and how to get uh, students online on devices. Um, and I worked with clients, students at Literacy Chicago, so I know how big of a challenge this can be. Um, and that a lot of students don't have access to computers or using phones or tablets and things. So um, just an overview of the things that I'm going to cover today. Um, using North Star from a proctor perspective and from a student perspective. And then we're going to go into the curriculum, kind of the basics of uh, the scope and sequence and everything you can find in um, each section of the curriculum for each topic. And then there's two subsects of topics. So most of the topics have online practice modules for learners to access that were created by North Star. Now, uh, there are a few topics that uh, online practice modules have not been developed for yet. And so I will um, show you how to access the external resources page for those. And some examples are Excel, PowerPoint, and Google Docs. And then I've also got a page of video resources for learners um, that can be discussed in a, a group session, a one-on-one, -on -one, one -on -one, or just given to the students to experience on their own time. And uh, leave some time for discussion at the end if there are things um, that we didn't cover or that need to be gone over in uh, more depth. So, um, I wanna invite you to um, practice with me first, um, pretending to be a student. So if you have a device handy, um, I'm gonna go on my phone. Uh, so the first step that a student is gonna take when they do this um, is to go online. So they can use any web browser. Um, I will preface and say that North Star is not the most friendly on a phone or tablet, but I know that not all of our learners have ex access to that. So you can go to Google, um, you can go to Chrome, you can go to Safari, Firefox, um, whatever they have access to, and you're going to direct them to go to the North Star site, which is uh, digitalliteracyassessment.org. So um, once you've navigated to the site, you're going to see the main homepage and however it comes up on your other device. Uh, if you're doing this on the computer, then it'll come up as a normal browser, um, but it will always have the three main things at the top, the test your digital literacy, build your skills, and become a North Star location. So we're going to focus on uh, take an assessment, and that's in green. So the color coordination is a really easy way to connect your learners to where they should be going. So, um, and they won't be using the Become a North Star location. So when you go to take an assessment, it'll pull you down to the bottom of the page and it will prompt you to enter a PIN, which will go over how to access your PIN and um, where you can find that information in the portal. Um, here, I provided my location PIN for my own proctoring. Uh, so this is my information. Everyone's pins are unique. So you can put in your location pin here. Um, and this is just one easy way to get your learner um, used to accessing the, the portal. So once you put in your uh, the pin um, that you would provide your learner with your own pin, you press go. So that's another green. You press go and it will lead you to a page um, that says, you know, if you're a learner, log in now. 
So if you have an account, you can log in on this page. And if not, you can just put your name in. So you can prompt your learner to put their name in. And from this, uh, you'll be able to access all of the assessments uh, as well as um, have the ability to get your assessment proctored, which we will also go over. Um, here, I do have my proctor pin up. And if your learner knew how to do that right away, then they could go ahead and join proctor mode and put in the proctor pin. Um, but otherwise they can just go in and take an assessment unproctored. Um, this is really good for pre-assessments or for learners who are just accessing the platform for the first time. It's less steps, they don't have to log in, they don't have to put in a second pin, they put in one pin, they get to the assessment page and they can click the assessment or tap on the assessment um, that they want to take. So um, I have these kind of, oh, I see there's, okay. I see Michael's dropping off. Um, so I have these prompted questions up here. What challenges did you face or what challenges might learners face? And this is all dependent on kind of what device they're using and uh, their familiarity with navigating on a web page. So this will vary from learner to learner. And I will say that um, as far as navigating into the assessment portal and viewing the list of assessments, that part is pretty straightforward and similar to the web page. What's different is inside of the individual assessments, you may be prompted or your learner may be prompted to use features that maybe you can't do with a finger, you need to click with a mouse. And so that might cause some problems for them. Uh, and it's just good to know that, you know, maybe it's not exactly as streamlined as using the computer version. Okay, so now I'm gonna take us through um, understanding the perspective of being a proctor. I think it's really great to understand the student perspective because you're gonna to have to walk them through that part of it and know what they should expect on their end of things. But as a proctor, you've also gotta be able to locate all of your information. So it's my understanding that um, all of our proctors with, or everyone who should be a proctor with Literacy Chicago is signed up as a proctor and has received the email and been prompted to complete proctor training. Proctor training will walk you through the general access and abilities of the North Star site and how to, um, you know, walk a student through and get an assessment and things. Um, if you're looking for more detailed information than just the proctor training, there are a whole slew of videos available on the North Star site. Um, but today we're going to go ahead and um, go through the uh, logging in as a proctor. So the steps, uh, you go in, you, you log into your North Star account with your credentials and what should come up uh, on the first page is your location pin and your proctor pin. The location pin, um, and I, if there were more people in our group, I would prompt you to send your pins to me in the chat uh, once you find them, uh, just as a little exercise. But the location pin will be tied to your location and will bring in that first step that we did of the student is tied to the location, they put their name in, and uh, then they're ready to take an assessment. What the proctor pin does is it allows for the learner to tie themselves to an individual proctor rather than just the location. So you can give your location pin and they can just take assessments or you can give them a proctor pin. And that means if, they use the proctor pin, you were there monitoring on the other side, seeing, um, you know, that they're taking the assessment. Oh, are they, you know, paying attention to, you know, just the assessment or are they on their phone and not, um, you know, cheating or, or whatever the case may be. Um, also with proctor pin, you're able to assign a certificate after they have completed and passed. The passing rate for an assessment on North Star is 85%. So uh, if they use your proctor pin, they pass their assessment, they can receive a certificate on their end. So this is more a case of if you are 
wanting to monitor your student, your learner, or if they are ready to pass the assessment and gain their certification, then you want to use the Proctor PIN. Um, so there's the pins. You can send them your PIN um, to use. And when they do that, you'll receive a notification that asks, do you want to proctor this assessment? Now, they can only take the proctor's, proctored assessment if you respond and say, yes, I would like to proctor this assessment. If not, um, they won't be able to. So you need to be on the other end to receive that. Uh, alternatively, you can navigate to the assessments tab and select start a new proctor session. So starting a new proctor session will open it up to anyone who uses your PIN and you don't have to confirm it. They, it's already confirmed because you've opened yourself up to doing a proctoring session. So challenges that might be faced here is that um, if the student goes through the initial process that we went through, they'll have to input two different pins uh, to get to the assessment portal that will be proctored. Now, if they log in directly and then put in the proctor pin and you are already, you've already started your new proctor session, the process will be more streamlined. So it really depends on your preference and setting things up with your learner and what your goals are. If they're trying to take a, uh, a pre-assessment or if they are ready to pass or think that you know, they wanna take a proctored assessment or if you prefer to be monitoring your students um, while they're taking assessments. So those are some of the things to consider uh, on the proctor side of things. Moving forward, I'm gonna cover the basics of the North Star curriculum and what's included on the North Star side of things. Um, in a couple of slides, I'll go to the North Star site and walk you through some important resources that you can access there. So each lesson, and this is different from the online practice modules. So every topic has this setup. And uh, so they all have a warm up. A we will learn, so um, objectives for the lessons, uh, model and explain, do it together, pair explore, task, vocabulary work, and wrap up. Now, it does vary on each subject for um, how many units there are. Some have a lot of different units to cover, different topics, and some have fewer. Um, so there is that. And then also I will highlight in our curriculum at the bottom, there's kind of this all-encompassing um, document that will walk you through um, how long each type of task would take you so that you could choose which ones you have time for. Or, um, you know, if, if you only want to do a few things, it'll show you um, what is happening in each section. So we'll review that as well. And um, first, I'm going to go over scope and sequence. So I've chosen the one for the basic computer skills and scope and sequence is also offered for each of the assessment topics. And it's an overview of each of the lessons. So you can see it has the uh, module name. It has a list of all the skills practiced and uh, the digital literacy standards set by North Star, unit specific vocabulary, and uh, lesson outline and standards addressed. This is the first page, there's a secondary page for this. And you can also access, you see here, there's a link to the North Star Digital Literacy Standards and um, North Star Digital Literacy Assessments. So you can navigate through those. Now this is useful if you have a learner who is um, really focused or driven through vocabulary, um, or to get an idea as, a, as an instructor, as a proctor of what things they'll be expected to learn. Um, and maybe they already know some of the things on the list and you can just cross them off and move on to other ones in the different lessons. So this is the second page. So it's very inclusive of all of the um, important vocabulary that they'll be tested on in the assessment. And it really breaks it down for you. So you know, you don't need to go over every single lesson depending on your learner's level and or their interest depending on the topic. Uh, so what do I have next? Okay, 
So this is the last slide before I'll go onto the site and show you where these things are. Uh, so external resources is really great. There, um, you navigate to the home, build your skills. It'll pull you down to the bottom of the page uh, and then view other resources. And then it's the external resource page. This is one of my favorite pages on the North Star site. And it's a little hidden because it's not with the curriculum and it's not with other resources uh, in your account when you log in and you can view the portal on your side. This is on the home page, um, and anyone can view this. You don't have to log in to view this on your account. So it has um, these little icons that show you which each type of resource will be a text resource, a media slash video resource, or an activity. And um, these are really good for those modules that do not have, uh, or for the topics that do not have online learning modules. Uh, so examples of those are going to be um, the Word, Excel, PowerPoint, and Google Docs um, do not have uh, modules yet. They're working on modules for these. So um, I would definitely recommend them for those topics in the middle, but you can use them for any of the topics. So I'm going to stop sharing for a second and pull you into um, the North Star site and show you how you can navigate to these resources. Okay. All right, so here I am on the North Star homepage. Uh, I am not logged in and what I'm going to go to is the build your skills in the center here. And this is great for, it says individuals, but I think it's also really useful for instructors. You can show your learners how to get to this page if you feel that they're interested in working independently, but I think more so um, it's going to be useful for instructor use. So going to see more, it's going to pull us to the bottom. And there's a couple of options, find a North Star location, which your learners won't need because they have you. And then um, there's also some modules or there's some topics that are uh, free to the public. So they have four different ones. Uh, and then you go to view other resources. And this is the external resource page. Uh, so it's just what I showed you. Uh, they have digital literacy skills volunteer tutor plans here that are for one-to-one -one use, uh, which also might be great for you if you are working one-on-one -on -one and you need ideas about how to organize your learning um, or what to cover with your learner. So I'm just gonna take us into one of these modules. Uh, let's go into the Excel one. And so Microsoft Excel, it has, uh, all of the standards here. So standard one for Microsoft Excel is open and close a workbook. So here we have a video resource and we also have a text resource. So the video resource is creating and opening workbooks and it's a video that explains how to do that. Um, whereas there's also a, an article that they can read with step-by-steps and images. Um, Say so this one does not have interactive elements so I'm gonna take us to one that does. Um, I'm trying to think of which, let's try Internet Basics. Okay, so Internet Basics has links to activity resources as well. And you can also view, like this is standard one. Um, and I'm just gonna take us into that so you can see an example. So this, is, this website is called learningchocolate.com and it has um, its games, its gamification. So if your learner is interested in doing something more hands-on, they're a tactile kinesthetic learner, you can take them into um, these. And this is a matching game. Uh, so they can hear what it is, they can see what it is, and there's different options here. So it's kind of fun. It's a different kind of element. Um, whereas let's view the, uh, 
let's view the other types of resources they have. So this is the video resource uh, straight from YouTube. And I'll take a second to load. Uh, I'm gonna pull up the article as well so we can get an idea of what they're providing here. Okay, that one's unavailable. That's unfortunate. <laughs> Let me pull that back. Okay, now we're on, that's also not, okay. This one's working. Okay, so how to connect to the internet article. Um, so this is probably a little high level for uh, learn for a basic adult learners. I would say this is something that you could read together in a group or one-on-one -on -one setting, it would be uh, kind of a twofer because they would be able to practice their reading skills as well as learn some things about um, accessing uh, the internet. So let me take us back to the external resource page. Um, yeah, so this is all separate from the North Star curriculum. They have built out the curriculum and each one is based on the standards that have been identified. Um, now to access the curriculum itself, I'm going to go ahead and log in to my account. and share back with you my view in just a moment. The thing is they will kick you out if you've been inactive for too long. Um, so, okay. So here I am logged in. All right. Still on the home page. Everything starts from the home page. Uh, you can go to your name up top, and it'll pull down this menu. So uh, you can go to the curriculum, and it looks exactly the same as the external resources. This layout is going to be continued throughout the whole site. Uh, so I'll go ahead and show you the difference between um, kind of the external resource page, and then what is available in the curriculum. So external resource page had kind of each, um, each one laid out with a couple of things that could be accessed. But here we have the scope and sequence, which I showed you for the basic computer skills. And then um, it has a couple of alignment standards maps, which for most purposes aren't gonna be useful. What you really want are these lessons here. And uh, so they're by topic. And then um, what I really like is the basic computer skills, the unit project. The unit project is where it's gonna lay out all of the different times, how much time everything takes. And um, so you can take what you want from it. So going through here, it gives you, you know, a question, something to consider up top. It also has the standards laid out here, which you probably won't need. Um, it also has the vocabulary, high frequency, also digital terms, and then the teacher prep guide. So it gives you kind of a guide. Okay, do you need to print this out? Do you need to pull this up ahead of time? And then uh, it, this is where it gets into it. So it, it tells you how much time the warm up is going to take and uh, different examples of things you can say to your learners. So this really takes the guesswork out of, how do I phrase this? How do I put it? It's spelled out here. If you aren't sure what exactly to say or how to direct your learners. So then I can, before reading, it tells you how much time it'll take. It has the articles here and what you can do step-by-step. Step. So what you can ask them, uh, how you can support them. So this one says you can model how to identify the title, bolded words, headings, and other uh, text features. And uh, there's another reading exercise here, guides you with what to do with the reading. 
and um, even an answer key here for you. So uh, there's a close reading one, close reading two, pair discussion. So if you're working in a group setting, you can you can copy this exercise and you can provide it to them or you can have it on the screen and just have them talk together. Um, depending on the level of your learners, if, if you're doing remote, you might not wanna put them in a breakout room, but if you're working with just two people, um, a pair discussion could be a, a small group discussion as well. Vocabulary work, uh, they provide the handout here. So it gives you kind of a matching game to do. You don't have to create anything. And this is at the bottom of the, there's the key, this is all, all included. Um, close answer or close reading answer key. It's all here. Um, so when you're, when you navigate to one of these links, it's all in the same document in the same browser. You're not like pulling up a bunch of windows. It's all included in the same spot, which is also really great. So that's one of my favorite um, resources, uh, the skills unit project. Uh, now I'll take you into one of the lesson so you can see what the lesson looks like. Okay, so this is lesson one and the skill is devices and computer logon. It breaks down the vocabulary into each unit. So you know specifically what you're looking at. It has the standards and then concepts. There's the teacher prep guide again and handouts that are also included in the same window um, available for download. You can print them. And then you have your warm up. So this is the outline that I showed earlier. Uh, so you can do pair small group work that we will learn to let them know what the objectives are for the lesson. And then model and explain. A lot of these are gonna have you do it on your computer and then uh, have the student parrot, parrot it back to you. And uh, the do it together, model and explain. So really it's all here. You don't have to create, um, you know, your, your activities, you know, if you don't have time, you can just jump into this and follow it as you go along with your student. Now, um, as far as the learning modules, online learning modules, all of the assessments have the curriculum. So all of these topics, you can go in even for Microsoft Word, and it has the lessons here. The difference is in what they have available for, on the student side. So if I go to North Star Online Learning, this is what your learners are gonna see on their end. It's asking me where I am. I'm not physically at our site, which if I was, it doesn't really make a difference, but it's data they collect. So this is what the learner would see on their end their dashboard, take assessments, their profile. And uh, so there's the um, take an assessment and lessons. So for some of them, like Mac, it says take an assessment or details, which means there aren't lessons available for the learners. Uh, you can also see that here for Word and Excel, it says details instead of um, lessons. Okay, so let's go in for Excel. We go to details. See, there's no practice lessons for this topic. And so this is kind of where we hit a wall with our learners is on these topics, you will need to provide them with uh, things to do. So that's where the external resource page comes in handy because you can send them the game to practice. You could send them the video to watch. Um, and then I'll show you. So for internet, um, they have the practice here. So there's all this information about the practice. Um, they can start the practice. And this takes you to an actual walkthrough of 
internet basics and uh, they have it all provided out and there's audio that they can listen to there's pictures on the screen so that's what they'll see when they go into uh, the practice to do independent practice of course probably the first few times that they go to do this you will need to walk them through and show them you know where everything is until they get used to the system um but yeah, and you can also see kind of the dashboard of their progress. So I have taken my assessment, but I have not completed any of the three practice levels here. Um, so they can mark their progress. And when you go to the full dashboard, you can see, so for this, I have completed 18% of the North Star online learning practice for basic computer skills. I have, um, and it, it tells you lessons are not yet developed, lessons coming soon. So this is a great detailed dashboard, um, but you will need to share this uh, with your learner and, and show them, you know, what they can do on here. Uh, it also tracks your time that you've spent uh, on this page, which goes into our learning hours. So on the admin side of things, all of the time that a uh, learner spends on this dashboard or taking assessments, going through practice modules is tracked in their learning hours. I know we track Literacy Chicago tutor hours and uh, tutor hours for both uh, volunteers and for learners. So let's see, another resource that I have, I'm gonna bring us back to my slideshow because we don't have a lot of um, participants today. I think this is going to, we're going to end early, uh, but let me pull up. Uh, I will share here. Um, this is another great resource uh, for those that have learners that are um, English, maybe their second language, um, or they're interested and or or they just um, maybe they are pretty proficient in English, but um, they want to do, you know, they want to learn in their other language, or um, it even just has great resources in English. But primarily, we use this for learners that are ESL. Um, whoops. So let me pull us to this if it's linked. So this is. Um, this is gcflearnfree.org, and this is not opening up on the right one. Let's see if this pulls us in. This is um, by the Goodwill Foundation. This site, it's really great. They've updated it recently. They have a ton of languages. When you go on the first page, it will straight away have English, Spanish, and Portuguese um, up at the top here. Um, so there's that. You can change the whole web page language, um, or there's um, you know French and uh, I'm not sure if this is what language: Russian, Chinese, um, Greek, Norwegian, Arabic. Like so many, so many languages. So um, if we go into topics, you can see they have so many things here. Now we are looking for digital resources primarily in basics. So they have basic skills, they have internet skills, Microsoft, Google. So this is a great website to visit for those modules or for the assessments that don't have the practice modules. Um, so let's go into the Excel one. It's broken down by topics different topics. So Excel formulas, Excel tips, Excel, and then it also has it by year. So depending on the age of their device and how updated it is, you can go into the different year um, for Excel. So if we go into Excel, which is getting started with Excel, the basics, they have a YouTube playlist up top and GCF has a great YouTube channel. They have so many video resources and I know that's a really great way to engage basic learners because they can see something, they can hear something, you can put on subtitles uh, for them to also read. So um, then you go through here, getting started with Excel. 
click on that takes you to this page. You have an introduction, uh, which highlights different vocabulary terms. And a lot of these terms uh, are crossed between like cross reference to the North Star vocabulary terms that they have. So that's really great. Um, my computer is not loading up super quickly, but um, there's a video here. It has more information about the tutorial and uh, which versions of Excel it will work for. It shows you pictures of the screen and identifiers of different parts. So you could take your learner here and you could say, okay, let's explore this Excel sheet and see what all these different parts are. Okay, this is the formula bar. This is a cell. And then you can go back and you can say, do you remember where the cell is? You know, you can have them identify parts here. So there's a lot of different ways that you can use these tools. And this is just for Excel. Okay, here's the video up. So they have um, so many great resources on this site. We can go back to um, another one and just check out um, the other topics. So uh, they have even one for smartphones and tablets. So if you're looking to help your learner better know how to use their device, you can do that on GCF. And um, that might be even great preparation for before they get started with North Star to give them a refresher on how to use the device that they have. So I'd strongly recommend accessing GCF Global. Um, it's also called, there's, you'll hear it a few names, GCF Learn Free, GCF Global, um, same thing. They just revamped everything recently. Um, and here, let's take it into maybe another language. Um, so I don't know. Okay. So it doesn't have all of the same information for all of the languages, um, but here it says selections from our most popular tutorials, which we've translated to Mandarin. So um, if you have a student who is interested in, in using another language, um, you can work with them on that and see which topics uh, might be available. It's, it's also a good transition in an ESL student, you know, because the things are here in English and they're also here in other languages. And so if, you know, they want to learn the skill, they can learn it in another language and then take the assessments in English and it just builds up all these skills for them. So um, going back to my presentation here, um, I also have these listed um, other video resources for learners that are not on the uh, North Star site and not on GCF. Uh, so some of those do include the Excel and um, a lot of basic ones using technology in daily life, how to log into North Star if they need that refresher or that touch point to go back to. Um, and so those are really great. I'll be sharing out the presentation with everyone. And then I had some discussion questions. And if either of you on the call would like to you know, participate in any discussion, I encourage you um, to let me know, or those who are watching in the future, to let me know what was useful from our presentation, um, maybe what tools you see yourself learning or using with learners, or if you have other resources um, that you think would be valuable uh, in teaching these uh, topics and um, any other questions that you might have about using North Star or the curriculum tools. I open it up. Um, Alex, do you have any questions right now or anything you want to share? Um, I think one thing that's crossing my mind is that I'd expect students to be at various um, like levels of progression maybe um, as we're taking them through a course. So I'm wondering if you have any ideas on like how to um, keep up with where a student is at like on a person by person basis. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I would say if you're working in a group setting, something that's really useful is to ask more advanced learners to um, share what they know about those things that they say they already know. 
Um, it will both reinforce what they already know, help the other learners to not feel lesser or inferior, um, that they're not ahead or where they should be. Um, and also sometimes uh, when we're brought to explain things that we think we know, we discover that we don't know as much as we thought we did. Um, so I would say that is a, a really useful way is to maybe someone says, oh, I already know how to do that. And so you can say, oh, that's so great. Uh, would you go ahead and show us? Or would you feel comfortable showing us? Um, I would also say it can be if you're working in groups to maybe split the groups up or if you're doing pairs to pair up someone who really thinks they know what they're doing with someone who doesn't feel confident in what they're doing or is you know not at the same level and pair it up that way so that there is that like teaching learning dynamic or you know sharing knowledge with the other learner um do you have further thoughts on that or did that did that answer your question I, that's a good place to start um i yeah i think it's interesting you point out the like have the um let's say the more advanced students um provide some support for the students that are um not as far along so as to like yeah one test the advanced students knowledge and then like yeah i think there's something to um if you have to explain something like you're kind of verifying with yourself that you know what's going on um but then i think it'll take some stress off and uh, maybe even like be kind of rewarding to the people that you know are um having a better time right now yeah yeah you made two really good points that having more advanced learners help the less advanced learners will hopefully take a little bit of pressure off of the instructor. And then also it makes you feel good when you are like, oh, I know, I know this, like I can show somebody else how to do it. Um, those are two really great um, points and aspects of that. I'll say that's not the only way. Um, I'm sure if, if Michael was on, he would have some thoughts on that too, but it definitely is the case that when you're working with a group, it's going to be mixed levels and um, you can always take a poll kind of based on, and I would recommend doing pre-assessments with all the learners to see where they're at. And then also in North Star, you can see which questions were missed. So then you can kind of say, okay, well, nine people, well, I don't know if your group's that big, three people missed this question. And um, so we definitely need to cover that. But maybe there was one student who missed a couple of questions that the others didn't. You don't have to spend as much time on that. You know, you can you can bring it in as like, oh, we're gonna do a refresher. Um, 12, wow, 12, that's really great. I'm, I'm surprised, um, but that's, that's a really good sized group. Um, that you can get people online that way. Um, it, are you solely working with the group of 12? No, I'm co-instructing with somebody, um, oh, okay. Charlotte. I don't remember her okay. last name. So you could potentially yeah. do breakout rooms as well. Um, with Charlotte, you mm -hmm. could grab half the students um, based on their pre-assessment scores or based on the level. We've done that in the past. Um, I forget what class it was for. Um, it was either for a basic like reading, writing class or a math class. And we um, kind of did like a pre-assessment. This was in-person times, but um, pulling, you know, students who are at different levels into different rooms for certain activities and then coming together for others. So that's always an option to um, separate them and and you don't really want to make it like a level thing it's just like i'm going to work with this group of people and you're going to work with this group of people and and that's kind of the end of it you no know, need to explain it to everyone and say well, you don't know as much as the other people because we want to uplift everyone and make them feel good about you know their learning experience and then there are some activities that you can do as an entire group if it's like okay we're just going to review all the material we're going to review this material and if it's prefaced as a review and some people already know it really well and they you know bring up an answer um but you can also put other students on the spot and say okay i'd love to hear you know do you do you know this or you know what do you think about this can you identify this for us uh, do you need a, do you need help? Can you do you want to call on one of your classmates to help you with this? Um, 
So yeah, I think the dynamics can definitely be played with on that. Um, Do you have any other questions or things that came to mind? Um, yeah, I think I got like two more. I'm the only, um, I guess, like student in this setting, right? Uh, Neo, you're also like instructing. Yeah, I'm with CCLC, yeah. <laughs> okay, gotcha. Um, I think one of the questions I had, um, it was related to proctoring. Um, so I understand that there is a proctor pin and then like a location pin, um, mm -hmm. if those are the terms. Or, mm -hmm. oh. Yes. But um, so, um, so, my understanding is that students can take assessments at any time um, and they're always like associated with the location that they're going through. Mm -hmm. Yes. So yeah. Okay. Is that like, go ahead. Go ahead. Okay. I can show okay. you. Um, yeah. Um, if you want to pull it up now too, that's sure. great. Um, I have, I have one student, um, I'm doing private lessons with one student. And so she's taking the assessments sort of at her own pace to test her learning. Um, I don't recall if like she actually puts in a sort of pin for the location. So was that like baked into their account from the get-go? So either they can put in the location pin and just their name or they can actually log into their account. So it, it depends what she- oh, I see. Doing. And if they log into their account, then she should be, I'm gonna pull up Literacy Chicago right now um, mm. and we can look. So, okay. So when I log so on- So if they're logged in, they'll just be like tied to that location? Yes. So Literacy Chicago's location pin is here. And um, that's, yeah, so that's the process. They can take, they can put it in on the homepage and type in their first and last name, or they can directly log in. Um, and then, so yeah. So when, when mm -hmm. I see you here- <laughs> so then their name will come up. Um, if they put in the name exactly as it is on their account, it won't show up as, as doubles, but um, I guess the problem you might run into if they aren't logging into their account directly is that um, you could have, for instance, like two Patricia McClendons. It could be Pat sure. McClendon or Patty McClendon instead. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, and so that might make it a little more difficult to see um, all the data together. But um, on their account, it will only have the name that's tied to the, the email and that. Um, yeah, so yeah. The, the, where the proctor pin comes in, um, and let me, my mine is set up a little bit differently because I'm an administrator. Um, so let me just see if I can get the, um, the proctor pin up. But the proctor pin is contingent on the individual they're working with. So if you're working with your student and she says, okay, Alex, I wanna take this assessment. Uh, can you proctor it for me? You can either give her your proctor pin and then it will send you a message and you'll verify, yes, I want to proctor the student or uh, you can open it up on your side um, that you want to proctor. So here, let me show you this. Now I'm on, I'm not on Literacy Chicago. I'm on uh, Chicago Citywide Literacy. Um, I'm proctor for, for that site. So when I go in, this is the first thing I see is the location pin. So this is the CCLC location pin. And then everyone has a unique proctor pin. Um, I believe you can regenerate your pin if you need to, um, but it's tied to you. So when a learner takes an assessment with your proctor pin, um, you'll be able to see who proctored them on the backside of things in the data. So um, if I am here and um, let me see where, okay, yeah, you go to assessments and then it has a section for proctoring. So you can um, view your current session, view all sessions. You can, um, this is like the launch page. So you can give your learner this link and they can go 
they put the link into their browser and it's already tied to your location and your account. Um, to view current proctor session, go in here. Um, it looks like I've been proctoring for five months, <laughs> um, not on purpose. So <laughs> I end this five month proctoring session um, and it shows you a list of your proctoring sessions, but you can also start a new session. So I start a session and then you can see who is taking the assessment while you're proctoring. So it'll give you a whole list. So if Patricia puts in your code, your proctor pin, then she will come up in your list. Um, so you just go to assessments and then view current session. I should probably end this so I don't have another five month session. Um, and then it looks like Michael's been proctoring for a while as well. <laughs> um, but yeah, so you can go here and see that. And then you can also view assessment results here. So um, you can see who has had a proctored exam and who has not. Um, I proctored myself on these exams or assessments um, just to kind of play that role out. Um, and then you'll see that you can be assigned a badge when you have not been proctored with a passing score. Um, but you can only be uh, um, assigned a certificate right away if you've been proctored. You can retroactively provide certificates for passing scores, uh, but you will have to go into the learner's account and, and edit that information. So, um, and then also, I guess this is really getting into like certificates, badges, but um, if you've been proctored you'll and you pass it, you'll receive a certificate, but not a badge, although badges can also be retroactively awarded. So <laughs> there's kind of the difference there. Did that help? Do you have further questions on the proctor um, proctoring? No, I think that was a good summary. And then I think, yeah, you sort of get, got into like uh, the certificate being provided only when someone's proctored. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I guess that's just sort of like a, how do I say it? Um, just to sort of like, double check of the validity of someone's credentials when they're taking a thing. Yeah, right. So um, yeah. if you go into, so this is for the CCLC account, but if you go into learners and then um, I'll just go into mine. So um, these were um, assessments that I took that, whoops, that I took. And these ones, these two, I. I proctored myself, but um, so the certificate is here. When you click on it, it will download. So, um, and the, you could download it for the student or they can download it for themselves. Um, and then, yeah, also the badges are here. Um, sorry, I was trying to view something else. Um, so, what was I? Okay, and then, um, you can edit their information. What, where is the, there is an ability. I can't remember exactly how to navigate it, but we could definitely go over that in the future, um, how to retroactively provide or award certificates and badges. Okay. Yeah. And maybe even just like a follow-up email of how to do that, but you know, I think it's a nice feature. Great. Um, so we are getting, it's almost four o'clock. Um, I don't mm -hmm. want to make this session any longer. And so I just have some contact information here. Again, I'm going to send out these slides. You can contact me, um, Neo, or Michael. Um, and we also have office hours that are open for support on Wednesdays and Thursdays from 1 to 2 p.m. Uh, so if you want to, if you need any type of support with North Star, you can hop in and we can have a little discussion. Um, or if you need access to something, I can send you access. The links for those are in um, the notes for this presentation. 
And uh, as well as we have a North Star tab on the Illinois Digital Learning Lab site, IDLL Google site, um, which you can access here as well that has more North Star resources. So um, I am gonna go ahead and stop sharing in a set or stop uh, recording in a sec. Thanks so much for coming to the session and, um, and let us know what kind of support you might need.